Hello everyone, Lorica here. Um, I'm going to talk today about a book and this I would say is one of my absolute favorite novels of all time. It's like, oh, <laughs> I will show you. It's called Witch Light and it was written by Susan Fletcher and it's the second edition of this book. It was first published under um, the name of Korach. I think you say Korach, Korach. I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, I have it on Kindle and it was called Korach, Korach, whatever, in Kindle, written by Susan Fletcher. But then I think it was re-released under Witchlight. And this book is just, you know, I, I've read this book probably, I stopped count when I read it for the first time. It's like one of these books for me that's like, you could call it my Bible in many ways. It's when I really feel a little bit um, not so good inside and maybe I feel a bit sad or, you know, things don't feel so good for me, I pick it up and I start reading it. And the world just opens up in a whole new way when I, when I do that. It's like, a, it just makes me feel so, so grateful for my life and how amazing life that I have. And it helps me to see the things around me with, with clear eyes, with fresh eyes. So <clears throat> what this book is about is I'm going to read you the blurb on the back, but I have to say that it doesn't come near to describing what this book is. This is just the, the basically what it's about, but not the nitty gritty of the book, which I will talk about in a bit. So first, um, yeah, I will just read you this little bit of the back. We, the witch-called ones, were meant to have less light in us, less goodness than normal folk. But I have as much light in me as the next soul. Next soul. Nine, um, 1692. Korag, a wild young girl living in the mountains of Scotland, has been imprisoned as a witch. Terrified in a cold, filthy shell, cell, she awaits her fate of death by burning until she is visited by Charles Leslie, an Irishman, hungry to question her. For Korak knows more than it seems. She was witness to the bloody and brutal massacre of Glencoe. But to reveal what she knows, Korak demands a chance to tell her true story. It is a tale of passion and courage magic and betrayal and the difference that a single heart can make to the great events of history. So <clears throat> it has a little bit of a historical theme to it, but it is written from her, basically from Korak's perspective. So it's, it's written in two forms, which is really interesting. The first is her words. So um, she talks to this Mr. Leslie, who comes to see her in her cell. So the whole um, novel takes place in her cell and it's her, just her voice as she talks to Mr. Leslie when it comes. And then, at the, and then in between at the end of each chapter, um, you have Mr. Leslie's letter to his wife in Ireland, um, writing to her about what he's up to. And it's just short letters, you know, it's a letter, it doesn't write pages and pages um, about, it's not a repeat of what happened, of what she said, but his interpretation of it. That's a better word, yeah. So how he interpreted what she said. So um, his viewpoint of her and how he sees her and we read what she says to him and we have our own idea of what we think that means and then how he interprets it in his way of what she says. It's it's a book 
oh i i just i, I can't describe I can't, it just goes beyond any words for me so i think i'm going to um and this girl has lost so much because she um, had to escape from this the witch hunt right and she got on a horse and she just rode on her horse all the way to scotland from england during those times and her her um, experience of that journey and how she arrived in scotland eventually and then made a home for her there <clears throat> but clearly as you will see right from the start and from this cell filthy cell that we talk about here is um how she ended up in there and what happened. So um, I'm going to read you a piece from this book. Um, she talks about Glencoe, where she, where she was now, where she was at this time. Still, there was magic in that place. I promise it. I felt it everywhere. I felt it in each tiny thing I saw, each stone which shifted under my heels or each raindrop. I had time now, time, until now had been as thin and as scarce as a wind-blown web, fluttering by, very brief. My second life had been go, go, and when I had the time to lie on my belly, and watch a snail. Okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> and when had I had the time to lie on my belly and watch a snail make its way across a leaf, leaving its moonshine mark? Never. I was running too much. I was galloping over mud and wild land with the mare snorting hard and any slow times were spent with her picking the nettles out of her tail. No snails, no hour upon hour in the rain, watching a leaf's middle become a rain-bright pool. I had never liked the word witch, and still don't, but if ever I deserved the name at all, it was then, I reckon. It was having my hair fly in the wind as I stood on the tops, and how I crawled through the woods where the mushrooms grew. It was cloud watching and stag seeing and spending long hours, full afternoons, by the waterfall that I'd bathed in, watching the autumn leaves fall down and make their way seaward. They bobbed and swirled. I said magic one day in the gully that led to my valley. I stopped. The wind was in the birches and it felt they were speaking. If they were speaking, it was magic, they said. Magic here. Oh, this book. So, um, yeah, Susan Fletcher wrote it. And I read a couple of her books because this one was so good. So, of course, I had to find more. And I don't know what the other one is called that I really enjoyed. Um, but it was a book about um, Van Gogh. And his time when he was in Arl, in or part, that he just left Arl, and he went to um, to the facility where um, he was treated for his mental health, and uh, yeah, it takes place at that time, and 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 it's about him and his time there. It was it was a really good book, really good book. So, but but this book is. Oh, magnificent it's just so beautiful and I don't know what else to see say about it except if you can get hold of it it's on Kindle it's on Kindle as well so if you can get hold of it I really recommend it it's it's a it's not a if you like books that move and have action and then maybe not so much this is a book for quiet reading it's a book where the images are so vivid that you feel you're in Scotland or you feel you're in England, you feel you're in that prison cell. And it has sadness to it that makes you feel a little bit, um, you know, it touches your soul, but in a, in a really beautiful way. And it shows how we, um, 
we judge people by what we hear and what we see. And once we get to know somebody, we get to know their soul, we need to get, get to know their hearts, then we can understand them and we know them suddenly. So um, yeah, if you watched all the way to here, thank you. And um, yeah, have a read. Find this book. <laughs> okay, have a beautiful week. Have a beautiful day. And I will see you soon. Bye.